Okay? And so we see the fire starting to burn. Okay? And again, this is the consequences of sin. Um, now let's put little Bill here at the good age of 16 years old. So he's a kid, but he's a, he's a kid on the verge of coming into his own. And he's beginning to realize that he's his own person. Okay? Now for me, <clears throat> um, I was given two primary messages at the age of 16 growing up in this culture. It wasn't Tallahassee, but it was the Western culture of the United States. Um, actually, Minnesota is where I was born and raised. Two messages. One message was, Nathan, these are the best years of your life. Make sure that you enjoy them. Okay, so you've got to enjoy these years, all right? The other message was, Nathan, the decisions you make during these years are going to shape the rest of your life. Okay, so make sure that you're careful and that you work hard, all right? Best years of my life, work as hard as I can because everything hinges, you know, <laughs> on what happens here. Okay? My point is those messages alone, those, were, those are conflicting messages, all right? So I was confused, very confused, trying to sort this stuff out, okay? And I would submit to you that we live in a lost culture, okay? And there's all kinds of confusing messages. But one message that wasn't given to me was, oh my gosh, Nathan, I mean, look at this. You're on fire, brother. You're on fire. Let me help you. Okay. Let's deal with what you're carrying around inside. Okay. I was not fortunate enough to have someone in my life to discern that that's what I needed. And to show that I felt inadequate and afraid and full of pain in the form of tears, that was not an appealing option, okay? So I did what I didn't realize I was doing, but I did, I, I utilized the power I have to hide, okay? And in Christian cultures, this power is a lot, a lot more pointed and sophisticated because we have kids Young people who are on purpose stifling things that are true about who they are, okay? But, you know, in the non-Christian culture, it's still a hiding, it's still a covering, okay? It's just not necessarily as pointed. I mean, what is the point of talking about these things, you know? What good is it going to do? But the therapeutic term is denial. This is the wall of denial, okay? The term I use is dishonest, okay? And basically what we're doing now is starting to hide the truth, okay? We're starting to hide the truth, which robs me of knowing and being known for who I really am. And incidentally, it keeps me out of these seeming to be less favorable, you know, options or inevitabilities, okay? Um, so little Bill now, <clears throat> Because if nothing changes, nothing changes. He is empowered to move into the increase of his responsibility. So in, in addition to being just a man, he becomes a married man. And he becomes a father. Okay? So his ground has increased. Right? He's also become a professional. And because he's really invested in keeping his denial up, you know, he advances quickly in his professional uh, career and so now he's responsible for a good many people all right and so let's put the deni denial wall down here a little ways let's put him here at 33 with mrs. William and little Bill jr. okay and the fire is raging sin choices are abounding and they're starting to increase in terms of their intensity um, and just for clarity's sake, let's uh, say they got married here, and let's make some of these sexual sin. The reason why I want to point out sexual sin is because it's usually the hardest to talk about. And so for the purposes of this illustration, I'm putting this on here. So these are infidelity choices, okay, in William's life, okay, but they need not be, all right. These are sin choices in his life, okay. So here he is. And he's got a whole conglomerate of people. He's got his parents, 
looking at him. And when they look at him, they don't see the fiery mess. They see a success. Okay? And so they smile at him because their success uh, reflects something positive about him. And then we've got uh, his siblings, his cousins. We've got his colleagues. We've got his friends. Okay? We've got his church members. So we've got a community of people. And all of them benefit from having all the good things of William around. And so they're all smiling at him. And they're smiling and they're smiling. Okay? And every once in a while, because the fire is so intense, it breaks through the denial wall. And uh, I don't know if you guys had the fire education in your school, okay? but the movie Backdraft was pretty educational. Mm -hmm. okay? So what do they say not to do if you're in a burning building and you touch a door? Don't, don't open it. Why not? Okay? Yeah. Because the switch of the air pressure is going to wreak some havoc, okay? So if there's a breach in this wall, and there's pressure behind the wall, what's going to come out is the consequences of a lifetime worth of unresolved stuff. And that usually doesn't come out with absolute clarity, okay? <laughs> All right? In fact, most often when vulnerable emotion is expressed, <laughs> because it's vulnerable, it comes out with a guard. And that guard is usually a feisty guard. You know, it's an anger, right? So usually the intensity of anger comes out and it's an expression of pent-up emotion. Okay? But Bill, William, is skilled, all right? He's been carrying this wall for his whole life. And so real quickly, when people, by the way, when that happens, her smile disappears, as does little Bill's. So their smile, we're gone. But he's real skilled. I had a terrible night. You know, I'm under a lot of pressure at work. I'm real sorry about that. You know, and he patches it up. All right. And typically, little Bill's smile will come back, but hers doesn't come back all the way. Okay. She's confused and she's a little more insecure. There's more to this picture. These emotions don't jive, they don't make sense. There's something else going on here. And most often when I speak with women who are with husbands that are keeping secrets, what happens that's especially twisted is most often it goes into there's something about me that's broken or that's wrong or that's tripping him up, you know. So it's usually an internalized issue for her. And Bill is trying to smile back at everybody. But it's only a half smile, okay? Because he's on fire, okay? He's in pain. Okay? And depending on how long he perseveres in these circumstances, okay, despair can set in. Is this all there is to life? You know? Is this what you meant for me, Lord? This is all I'm going to get, you know? He's fallen into the trap of the age that we live in. And the way I paraphrase that, paraphrase that trap is he's living for other people's smiles. Okay? And it's always better if I hear from Bill at this stage of the game. It's always better if I hear from him now. As opposed to somebody seeing one of his secrets and uncovering him. Okay? But sometimes God in his mercy will intervene and uncover to bring about resolve. And we can see the mercy component here, can't we? Okay. In his mercy, he would expose him. All right? Because he's on fire and he's ill-equipped to do what it takes. But it's always better if I hear from him before he's been exposed. So I'll get on the phone with them and there's a definition of insanity. I've invented a definition of senility. Okay? There's a real dictionary definition. This is my definition of senility. All right? It's that point in which a person begins to believe their own deception. Okay? Because that's when their grip on reality gets lost. Okay? No longer, my, my grip is getting lost. All right? So we break from reality there. And in the conversation that I have with Bill most often, um, I'll inevitably see a surefire indication of his senility starting to come into place. You know? And it's captured in this phrase, and I want to see if someone can point it out. All right. So, Bill, thanks for opening up to me. 
I appreciate hearing about your life. And my heart goes out to you, brother. I can see the pain that you're in. I'm honored that you shared with me. I'm going to do everything I can to walk with you through God's reconciliation process with you. Okay? All right. Who else knows about this? Let's start there. Who else knows? Well, nobody else knows. Nathan, I haven't told anybody. You're the first one I've ever told about any of this stuff. Okay? So you haven't told uh, you haven't told Mrs. Bill? No, I haven't told her. Well, tell me, why haven't you told her? Why haven't you told her? Well, I haven't wanted to tell her because I haven't wanted to hurt her. What's senile about that, anybody? Say it again. Yes. Why do you say that? From experience. Okay. Bless you. 